Today on Earth Focus, garden plants may be killing bees. Dr. Susan Kegley on the reasons why. Coming up on Earth Focus. Honeybees help pollinate one out of every three bites of food we eat. But honeybees are under threat and their numbers are falling. Beekeepers in the United States have been reporting annual hive losses of 30% or more, higher than is considered normal or sustainable. Bee losses have been linked to a number of factors like habitat degradation, malnutrition, and infestations by the Varroa mite. But a growing body of scientific evidence suggests that a class of neurotoxic pesticides called neonicotinoids are a major contributor to bee death and to the recent global bee die-off, a phenomenon known as colony collapse disorder. Dr. Susan Kegley studies the impact of pesticides, including neonicotinoids, on the environment. The effects of these pesticides on the bees is many-fold. It affects reproduction, it impairs reproduction. Um, the queen failure rate, queen bees used to live for several years, and now you're lucky if you get a queen bee to last for six months. The navigational ability of the bees is impaired. They can't find their way home. And for a bee, that's the foragers that go out know their way back to the hive. If I were to move these hives five feet, they would fly back to the place where the hive used to be. It, they're that specific. And so if they can't find their way home, they can't bring resources back to the hive. The hive gets depleted of, of worker bees and forager bees, and the hive just crashes after that. Introduced in the mid-1990s, neonicotinoids are the most widely used class of pesticides in the world. Studies show that these systemic pesticides, which are taken up through the roots and leaves and distributed throughout the entire plant, are toxic to bees, even at low doses. These pesticides also affect other pollinators besides the managed honeybee that we know so well. There are 4,000 species of native bees in the U.S. The bumblebee is the most common. There are a lot of other bees, and they too are being harmed by these pesticides. Their populations are declining as well. Uh, the managed honeybees can at least be moved if the beekeeper has the resources to do so. Some bees escape poisoning from that tactic, but not the native bees. The native bees have to be where they live. Neonicotinoids are commonly used in commercial agriculture, landscaping, and home gardening. Gardens can be traditional havens for bees and other pollinators, providing nectar, pollen, and bee nest sites. But today's gardens are becoming toxic to pollinators because neonicotinoids are becoming all too common. What we found in our study of nursery plants that are being sold as bee-friendly flowers is that about 50% of them contain neonicotinoid insecticides, and some of them were at very toxic levels to bees. So the unsuspecting gardener will go buy these plants, put them in their garden, hoping to do the bees a favor by providing food for them, and when in fact they're actually maybe poisoning the bees instead. Kegley and her team found 54% of the plants they sampled contained neonicotinoids at levels that could harm or kill bees and other pollinators. The plants were sampled at three national retailers and analyzed by an independent laboratory. We sampled in San Francisco, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Washington, D.C., and all of the places we sampled had plants that contained the neonicotinoid insecticides. Pollinator-friendly nursery plants sold to consumers don't list pesticides used on the plants, nor do they carry a warning that pesticides used could harm pollinators. These nursery plants are treated at the uh, wholesale nurseries that grow them for the big retailers. There's a problem there in that we don't need to treat a plant if there's no pest present. What the result is is that many plants that end up in the retail stores still contain these pesticides and even still contain the granules that may be in the soil. So the plant continues to be poison for 
many months. And for some of these pesticides, they can last as long as several years in the soil. The now common cosmetic use of pesticides in lawns and landscapes may be an important contributing factor in declining honeybee and wild pollinator health. One of the biggest uses of these products containing neonics are for grub control in turf. And if you have a border of turf with flowers on the side, um, those flowers are going to be taking up the pesticide as well. If there's clover in the lawn and the bees are foraging on the clover and you've treated that lawn with this grub control pesticide, they will be getting the neonics through that route as well. And particularly troubling is that home garden products containing neonicotinoids can be legally applied in far greater concentrations in gardens than can be on farms, sometimes at concentrations of as much as 100 times as great, which increases the risk to pollinators. I have a lot of flowers in the backyard and I love to make habitat for bees. So I think it's important that they have a safe environment to be in. And the way I accomplish that is by growing my own plants from seed. And that way I can ensure that the plants that my bees are foraging on are not poison to them. The use of these pesticides on bee attractive plants needs to be stopped altogether. These pesticides last for long enough that even if you only apply them after the bloom period is over, they're going to be there for a long time in the plant. There are other ways to manage pests that don't involve making the plant toxic for its lifetime. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.